Well, today is a very exciting day, 1st of December, and it's the first time in the history of conservation in Mauritius that we've released back into the wild captive bred endemic Mauritian snails. The largest surviving Mauritian native snail is called Pakistala bicolor. Mauritius had at the time of human settlement somewhere around 130 species of native or endemic snail. And since human settlement, about a third of those have become extinct, a third of those are critically endangered of becoming extinct, and a third are probably secure. So what's happened to the snails? Why do they become extinct? Why are they going extinct? And the answer is the usual uh, culprits, forest destruction, clearing, forest degradation, and introduced alien predators. So before releasing the snail, every snail was clean and then given a unique color combination, which was made with nail varnish. So they had five dots of different colors, and from this, every snail is going to have an individual coding. So we'll be able to identify each individual snail. Also, to know if the snails are growing or putting weight, or in the reverse, they are not growing and losing weight, every snail was measured. We took the width, and then we took also the length, and also the weight. So with these three measurements, we'll be able to know how healthy the snails are. And every two weeks at the start, we'll come and check the whole enclosure for the snail, try to find every snail, measure them again, then we'll have a comparison. So this is the snail enclosure. That's where we are going to release the captive breast snail. This enclosure is based on the design developed in Hawaii and also in the Caribbean. We have wire mesh that goes in the ground and then it's bent 20 centimeters. So if any animal, any animal try to dig in, it will hit the fence and then the cobra. And we also have this gutter, inverted gutter. So if an animal climb on the fence, it won't be able to turn and go inside. And one specification we added is copper wire because the snail get electrified when they touch copper. So it will prevent snail from out getting in and the one from in getting out. And the design that we did differently is that we want the snail to uh, disperse from here. So this is why we have uh, wire mesh. In the other design in the Caribbean and in Hawaii, it's a fixed metal sheet, so it's to keep the snail inside. But in our case, we want the snail to disperse out. So this is going to be a breeder population, and small snails are going to be able to go through and disperse around, whereas the breeding population is going to be kept safe inside the enclosure. It's very important to save the snails in, in their own right. The only place these ones occur is on the island of Mauritius. But in addition, they form an important role in the ecosystem. Snails, these sorts of snails, are decomposers, and that's very important. Leaf litter falls to the ground, they will eat the leaf litter, they will digest the leaf litter, and in so doing, they release nutrients which are vital for then recycled back in to the environment for the trees and plants to take in that nutrient and grow again. So snails form a really critical ecosystem role in that sense. About one year ago, we came and collected with National Parks permission five adults on Mount Kamizar. It took us all day to find five adults. We took them to Labani, set up a special breeding enclosure for them. The key thing in there is to make sure that they've got their food, their shelter, and there are no predators. And then they did what snails do naturally, they bred. And within one year, those five had produced about 100 viable offspring. And today we release 50 near adults into a sort of a semi-wild enclosure back on Mount Kamisa. All right, five, two, three.